We've all got brains, so we're built for mathematics. So turn yours on and get ready for... Mike Drop Math! Yes, I'm Mrs. Wells Corfield, and I just love that s. You know who else loves that s on the end of maths? My student teacher, Miss Taylor. She is originally from Romania and was super pumped to see that we say and use the word maths. Romania is a country that's located in Europe. If you're looking for Romania on a map, you will see the Black Sea is to the south, Ukraine is to the north, Hungary is to the west, and Moldova is to the east. In Romania, people say mathematicas or maths instead of math just like people in other European countries, and just like the fifth graders in my class located in Montpelier, Virginia. Whether you say math or maths, we are glad you are tuning in. Now, get ready to turn it up, because I've got a special guest with a bone to pick. It's the decimal, and she's not happy about how she's being treated, not one bit. We hope you listen to this decimal with an open mind and really hear her out. Do you get her? Does she make sense to you? Do you ignore her position? Or worse, do you give her neighbors a shove without even considering who they really are? All right, it's time to bring her in. Decimal Point, I'm glad you could be here. I know you've been having a tough time, and I really appreciate your willingness to talk to us. Well, I can't say I'm happy to be here, but I am grateful some kids are interested in getting to know the real me. So, tell us, what's going on? What point are you trying to make here? Well, I'm a decimal point. I'm using decimal numbers. People don't act like I matter. I may look small, but I'm kind of a big deal. I separate the whole numbers from the parts. See? Decimal numbers are like fractions, except for decimals have me, which makes them way cooler. Well, I can't comment on that. Fraction Bar might be a future guest. I don't want to upset fractions. They're an important part of mathematics. It just wouldn't be proper to compare fractions and decimals, although we do it all the time. And anyway, really, you two have a lot in common. Basically, you're different ways of writing the same thing. Come on, fractions can have any denominator. My decimal numbers like to keep it really simple. We're what people call user-friendly. The denominators we choose are 10, 100, or 1,000. Fractions will use any number for a denominator. I agree, but we like to keep it fair and square here at Mic Drop Mass, and I have to say, any decimal number can be written as a fraction, and any fraction number can be written as a decimal, so... You're missing the point! What's that? Me. Oh, okay, I see. Tell me more about yourself. Well, first of all, I'm not a period. I'm a decimal point. Ugh, I'm not over here ending sentences. I'm separating whole numbers from parts that aren't big enough to be one and aren't small enough to be zero. And when people read me, I go by and. And is my given name when you're reading me in a number. That's a valid point. What else do you want people to know about you? Let's see. Oh, the word decimal comes from the Latin word for 10. Hmm, that seems like it might be important. I'm loving these facts. Give me some more. Location matters. It matters where you put me. If you move me to the left once, number gets 10 times smaller. Move me to the left twice, and my number gets 100 times smaller. Move me to the left three times, and my number gets 1,000 times smaller. How would you feel if it was your paycheck and someone moved the decimal point three places to the left? Not good, right? Ouch. That decimal placement would really hurt. Now if you move me one place to the right, I make a number 10 times bigger two places to the right, and the number gets a hundred times bigger. Three places to the right, and I make a number a thousand times bigger, which would be pretty nice for a paycheck. But either way, you can't go moving me around willy-nilly. It's called the base 10 system, and I wish people would start to show a little respect around here. I see. So you're saying that you feel like people place you any old where without thinking about how much your location matters. Am I hearing you correctly? Yes! Let me tell you a story about exactly how much it matters. Ooh, okay, we love stories here at Mike Drop Maths. In 2013, Spain spent about $3 billion, billion with a B, to build a new submarine. But when they were about to test it, they discovered it was 70 tons too heavy. What is he doing? Oh, oh no. no. This did not happen. Oh, 
No. It could go underwater, but it would be too heavy to come back up. Wow. That seems like it would be a big problem for a submarine. What went wrong with their calculations? Someone put a decimal point in the wrong place. Okay, well, I know some students who care about this sort of thing. I'll go have a talk with them and be right back. Class, I need to introduce you to someone, but she's all kinds of grouchy, and rightfully so. She's really important, but before you can meet her, I need you to learn about her and what she does. Why should we get to know someone who is grouchy? We like maths, not drama. Well, Trey, because she's everywhere. You really can't avoid her forever, and she's useful. She's just feeling unappreciated and misunderstood. She's the decimal point. And you can find her in batting averages in baseball, on the pump when you're buying gas, on the scale when you're weighing yourself, and any time you're using money. Whoa, this decimal point does seem important. I definitely have seen him before. Yeah, not only is a decimal point everywhere in your real life, the decimal numbers she's used in are just another way to write something you already know about. Fractions. Wait, how are decimals and fractions similar? They look completely different. Well, with fractions, you can have proper or improper fractions that show a part of a whole or mixed numbers that show a whole and a part. Decimal numbers simply use a decimal point to separate the whole number from the parts. Any number that can be written as a fraction can also be written as a decimal, and any number written as a decimal can also be written as a fraction. Whoa, mind blown. I had no idea. So why is the decimal point so mad anyway? What'd we ever do? Well, Luke, it's not that you did anything yet, but lots of kids, unintentionally, in the past, have. Before I tell you about all that decimal drama, why don't we keep getting our facts straight about the decimal point? Let's do it! Alright, I want you to explore the base 10 system. I want you to see for yourself. Luke, pass these hundreds grids out to all of your mathematical friends. And you, you at home, or in class, or in the car, you can follow along with our handy dandy follow along sheet you can print it right out from our website, www.micdropmass.com, or you can just listen along. The choice is yours. Either option is a good option. Okay, they're all passed out. What should we do now? Take a moment. What is in front of you? What do you notice? What do you wonder? Well, I see a square with lots of lines on it. I see the big square too, but I notice there are tiny squares that make up the big square. Yeah, there are. Actually, there are a hundred tiny squares inside the big square. Do you notice anything else? I'm not sure if I know how to describe this, but I see columns, too. If you look really closely, it's like there are ten columns going up and down. Each column has ten of those smaller squares. Oh yeah, I see that. There are ten rows, too. Nice observations, mathematicians. Now. What do you wonder about those? If you were to name those rows and columns, or if you were to name those tiny squares, what would you name them? Take your time. I'd much rather you think deeply than quickly. Okay, well, if we're gonna name the smaller boxes, I'd call them tiny boxes or something like that, so everyone would know they're really small. I respectfully agree and disagree with Trey. I'd name them something to do with 100 because there are 100 of them in the big box. But people will be confused because a hundred sound big, but they're really small. You know what mathematicians call each of those 100 tiny squares that make up that one big square? Hundreds. You've both got great ideas. They wanted to use a hundred to show how many parts to make the whole. Then they added the THS so everyone would know we were talking about small parts, not whole numbers. That makes sense. So, what could we call those columns or rows that Olivia saw in the big square? Well, if the little boxes are called hundreds because it takes 100 to make the hole with the s on it, the end, so we know their parts, then I would call these tenths because it takes 10 of them to make the hole, and since they're small parts, I'd keep the s. Wow. You're really inside the heads of those early mathematicians. This is the base 10 system in action. Now, let's pass out some more grids. Tori, can you make sure everyone has 10 of those big squares? Okay, everyone has 10. Now what? Put those grids together. 
side by side, and tape them to make one big rectangle. Kids listening in, do you see that on your handy dandy follow along sheet? Or are you picturing 10 big squares taped together in your mind? All taped. Now, hold on tight. What if I told you that you've made one? I thought just one square represented a one. During our first mathematical exploration, one square grid was one. But now we are on a new journey, and now 10 grids taped together is one. The size of one can change. That is why I will always define the whole when I'm asking you to name decimals. When I say define the whole, it just means I'm telling you how big one is, because remember, the size of the whole or one can change. I could take one tenth of $100 or I could take one-tenth of one million dollars. The size of the hole would definitely be a game changer in that situation. Well, if it takes ten tenths to make a hole and I take ten squares together, then each square represents a tenth. Look at that math's mind. We all have them. I'm glad you're using yours, Sophia. So, how could we show a hundredth? I have a conjecture. I think 100 will be smaller than 110 because no matter what size the hole is, it takes 10 tenths to make one, but it takes 100 hundredths to make one. I respectfully disagree. Hundredths just sound bigger than tenths. Yeah, but it always sounds bigger. Hundredths are smaller because it takes more of them to make one. Well, why don't you use your representation to check Tori's conjecture. Look, I see it. Each one of those columns could be in a hundredth because there are 100 of them. And yeah, I must agree with Tori. Hundredths are smaller than tenths. I wonder if there could be any smaller parts than hundredths. What about those individual tiny boxes? You're right. There are a hundred of those in each box, and there are ten boxes. If I counted by hundreds, that would be 1,000. So, what could we call those even smaller pieces? Thousands? Geez, these thousands are a lot smaller than tenths. They are also smaller than hundredths. All this mass talk is making me super excited. Questions and discussion are definitely the best way to learn maths. I'm so proud of you. Now, since tenths are closer to the whole, we'll put them right next to the decimal point, then hundredths, and then thousandths. You can see this written on any decimal place value chart anywhere. All of this decimal place value reminds me of the prequel to the Three Billy Goats Gruff. The, the prequel? You know, the story before the story? Oh. I'd like to tell you a little story about the three decimal places Gruff. The, the what? You heard me, the three decimal places Gruff. There once were three decimal place values tenths, hundredths, and thousandths. They were separated from the whole numbers by a place value bridge. One day, they decided they want to go see what was on the other side of that bridge, but they'd have to pass by the terrible, hungry troll lurking under the bridge waiting to eat whomever crossed. One day, the thousandths decided to cross the bridge. Who's that trip trapping over my place value bridge? It is I, the thousands place. If you come any closer, I will eat you up. Oh, don't eat me. My much bigger brother is about to cross the bridge. He's the hundreds place, and he's ten times as big as me. <sighs> okay, you can cross the bridge. Who's that crossing my place while you bridge? It is I, the hundreds place. Well, I've been waiting for you, and I'm very hungry. Now I shall gobble you up. Don't eat me. My sister is about to cross the bridge. She's the tenth place, and she is ten times bigger than I am. Oh, you can cross. I'll save him for the bigger place value. Who's that crossing my place value bridge? It is I, the tenth place. I've been waiting for you. Now I shall finally eat. Don't eat me. You can eat my brother, the whole number. He ten times bigger than me. <sighs> okay, you can cross, but I'm a troll and I'm hungry. Things might get ugly soon if your big brother 
the whole number doesn't come trip-trapping soon. The tense place smiled a sneaky smile as she passed the troll, because she knew her big brother, the whole number, was on the other side of the bridge already, and that troll was never going to get to eat up any of her place value family after all. Little did the troll know that soon some billy goats would be coming and they weren't quite as kind as the place values in the base 10 system. Now, I don't know about you all, but my mass wheels are spinning. I love learning and growing, but I think I need to make a point to take a time out for some mass laughs. There's a fine line between numerators and denominators. Only a fraction of people will think this is funny. <laughs> <laughs> I used to hate maths. But I guess decimals do have a point. <laughs> a talking sheep dog gets all the sheep into the pen for his farmer. He comes back and says, all 40 sheep accounted for. The farmer says, but I've counted them and I've only got 36. The sheep dog replies, I know, but I rounded them all up. <laughs> So we are learning about all these numbers and how each place in the number has a different value. Who came up with this number system anyway? What a great question. I love your curiosity. Your question got me thinking and digging and researching, and I found out some pretty cool math history. Alessandra King is an astrophysicist, but she's also taught math and science in middle school and high school. This is what I learned from her. Numbers have been a fact of life throughout recorded history. Early humans will count animals or people by using body parts like fingers and toes or tally marks. But eventually, human life got more and more complicated and there were more and more things to count. Different civilizations came up with different ways of recording higher numbers. Greek, Hebrew, and Egyptian numerals were a lot like tally marks but they used new symbols to represent higher values. Then, Roman numerals came along and added another twist. If a number came before a numeral with a higher value, it would be subtracted. But even that wasn't enough to write really large numbers. This is when humans came up with positional notation, which is what you are studying right now. Instead of drawing symbols repeatedly and inventing new symbols for larger magnitude, we started using positional notation. This system lets human use the same symbol simply by assigning them different values based on their position in the number. Babylonians, ancient Chinese, and the Aztecs came up with the first systems that used positional notation. By the 8th century, Indian mathematicians perfected this system. Over the next several centuries, Arab merchants, scholars, and conquerors began to spread the system of place value or positional notation to Europe. This system is what we call the decimal or base 10 system. It can be used to represent any number using 10 unique symbols. The position of these numbers indicate powers of 10 starting on the right and increasing as we move left. For example, the number 316 is three 100s, 110, and six ones. The Mayans improved on this system. They came up with, get this, the number zero. Before Mayans created the zero, Mathematicians would leave a blank where the zero would be now, which would make it hard to distinguish 12 from 120. Zero started being used as both a number and a placeholder, which made this system very reliable. Any 10 symbols could be used to represent the digits zero to nine. Most scholars agree that the digits zero through nine that we use now evolved from the North African Maghreb region of the Arab Empire. By the 15th century, what we now know is a Hindu Arabic numeral system had replaced Roman numerals in everyday life to become the most commonly used number system in the world. So why did the Hindu Arabic system, along with so many others, use the base 10? The most likely answer? Because we have 10 fingers. Seriously. That's why I say go ahead and use those fingers. You don't need to hide them in your desk to count. Ancient scholars built an entire number system off of them. So. The next time you use a large number, think of the massive quantity that is captured in just a few symbols. Pretty cool, huh? Whoa, it's amazing how many civilizations in the world came up with these systems of writing larger numbers. We're learning place value which took hundreds and hundreds of years to create, and it was created by mathematicians all over the world. Exactly. 
The actual idea of decimal numbers instead of fractions was developed by mathematicians from Persia, Belgium, and Germany. The way they wrote decimal numbers looks very different than the way we write them today. But the idea about tenths and hundredths is the same. Math is, and always will be, fascinating. All right, can we make, meet the decimal point now? That's my daughter, Sydney, and she's six. She loves to listen to our Mic Drop Mass podcast and hear all about what my fifth graders are learning. And I think she's right. Let's meet Miss Decimal Point. Hello. It's so nice to meet so many young mathematicians. Hi, Decimal Point. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Anything. We've been talking about rounding decimals. Can you help me understand that a little better? I'd love to. Miss Wells Corfield, do you like number lines? Oh, yes. Number lines are the hottest thing in math. We use them all the time. Great. Okay, students, can you draw a number line on your desk? Draw a straight line, put arrows on the ends of the line. Got it. Now, draw a line right in the middle. Done. Now, draw four little marks evenly spaced out on the left of the middle line and four evenly spaced out on the right. Like this? Kids listening in, you can draw your own number line or take a peek at ours on our handy dandy follow along sheet that can be conveniently found on micdropmass.com. Everything you need to know is right there on that line. Really? Yup, rounding is simply finding what number the number you're rounding is closest to. And you can find any number to the nearest whole or tenths or hundredths all by using that very same number line. Let's do this. Let's take the number 47 decimal point 528 or 47 and 528 thousandths. What a beautiful number. Let's round it to the nearest whole. Five or above, give it a shove. But why? Why are you shoving that beautiful number? I don't mind if you do it as long as you can tell me why. Because it rhymes? Come on kids, we can do better than that. Let's use reasoning. If rounding is all about finding what number a number is closer to, then I'm sure we can use our number line to prove it. Let's put that super powerful number line you just drew to use. But if I need to know which number it's closer to, then I'll need to know what numbers it comes between. I'm not sure how I can tell what 47 and 528 thousandths comes between. Well, the decimal point did say we should round to the nearest hole. I know the whole number is to the left of the decimal point, but which will I use? 47 and 528 thousandths, would I say the 7 because it's in the 1's place? 40 because it's in the 10's place? Or 47 because it's everything on the left? Great questions! And this is something that often confuses students. I see it all the time. What would happen if we just used the digit in the ones place? If we rounded to seven, but dropped the four tens? I'd get really upset. This is what makes me so sad. You can't just change the value of my number. You can round it, but you can't tell me that 47 and 528 thousandths comes between seven and eight. It's way bigger than seven or eight. Oh, that's true. And we didn't ask you to round to the nearest tens place. We asked you to round to the nearest whole number. Let's take the whole, whole number. Okay, well then 47 and 528 thousandths will come between 47. But what would the other number be? If we were just counting, 48 would come after 47. Does that mean that our number 47 and 528 thousandths comes between 47 and 48? It sure does. Oi, I feel so much better. You kids really know how to think through some numbers. So let's put 47 on the left of our number line and 48 on the right of our number line. I'm going to keep asking questions because I really want to understand this rounding business. And I know the only way that I can truly understand something is by asking questions until it clicks. Ask away. I see my number is between 47 and 48. But how do I know which one is closer to? What do you guys think? Hmm. I don't know if this is correct, but I'm going to take a chance. Mistakes are part of learning. So here it goes. I think if it takes 10 tenths to make a hole, so maybe if we are rounding to the nearest hole number, we should look at the tenths. Wow, Logan. I love how you put yourself and your ideas out there. Questions and discussion are the only way we can really learn math, and I completely agree with you. 
But there are five tenths in the number 47 and 528 thousandths. That's smack dab in the middle. When I go to the lower number, it's between 47. Or higher number, it's between 48. Wow, great observation, Destiny. Mathematicians have made an agreement that if we are rounding and we land in the middle of our number line at 5, whether it's plain old 5, 5 tenths, 5 hundredths, or 5 thousandths, we will round to the larger number. Then if I rounded 47 and 528 thousandths to the nearest whole number, it would be 48. Nailed it. The closest whole number to 47 and 528 thousandths is 48. I wonder if I could round that same number, 47 and 528 thousandths, to the nearest tenth. It seems like I should be able to. I think we can, but I'm wondering, how would we put it on the number line? Well, maybe. It's the same idea as before. We should probably keep the digit in the place that we are rounding and everything in front of it. Otherwise, we'd be changing the value of the number. So, can you show me what that would look like on the number line? The number line just really helps me see your thinking, and it helps you see which number your number is closer to. Well, I set up my number line just like before, a long line with arrows on both ends and a hash mark in the middle. I like to make that line a little bigger than the four little tick marks to the left and to the right of it. If I'm rounding 47 and 528 thousandths to the nearest tenth, I'm going to put 47 and 5 tenths on the left side of the number line. And if we are counting by tenths, then the next number would be 47 and 6 tenths. Let's put that on the right. Whoa. I think we just found the numbers that our number comes between if we are rounding to the nearest tenth. If we look at the tenths to round to the nearest whole, then I think we should look at the hundredths to round to the nearest tenth. It takes ten hundredths to make a tenth. Each of these tick marks is now representing hundredths. That's pretty cool because the last time we did this, the tick marks were representing tenths. The number line strikes again. I'm going to mark two then, because that is how many hundreds are in the number 47 and 528 thousandths. It just looks like it's closer to 47 and 5 tenths than to 47 and 6 tenths. That's because it is. I believe you have found your answer. If you round 47 and 528 thousandths to the nearest tenth, it would be closer to 47 and 5 tenths than to 47 and 6 tenths. I've got a gut feeling we could round this very same number to the nearest hundredth too. And I have a feeling we can keep on using the number line to round. Alright, I've drawn my number line. Kids tuning in, you can see our number lines or draw your own on our handy dandy follow along sheet. Or you can just picture our number lines in your math minds. You do you. If I'm rounding 47 and 528 thousandths to the nearest hundredth, then I better not mess with the whole number or tenth. I'm trying to find what my number is closer to, not change the value completely. Good idea. Let's put 47 and 52 hundredths on the left. And if we count it by hundredths, we can put 47 and 53 hundredths on the right. I love your thinking. And I know it takes ten thousandths to make a hundredth. So if I look at the thousandths, I can find out which number on my number line I am closer to. 47 and 528 thousandths has 8 thousandths. That's super far down my number line. This number is definitely closer to 47 and 53 hundredths than to 47 and 52 hundredths. And there you have it. You took one number and rounded it to three different places. And each time, you were able to use a number line to see which you were closer to. Way to go, Mic Drop Mass kids. Before we wrap up episode three of Mic Drop Mass, it is now time for another one of our famous game shows, Name That Digit. All right, contestants, who's ready to name that digit? I am. Let's go. This game is pretty simple. I read a number and show you the number on our Jumbotron. I will say a place value and you will have to 
Buzz in and name the digit that is in that place. Do you have any questions? Let's do this. Game on. Kids listening in, feel free to shout the answer if you know it. You can even try to be our contestants. Here's your first number. 4.673. Which digit is in the tenth place? The digit in the tenth place is 6. That's correct. In the number 4.673, the 6 is in the tens place. Okay, same number, 4.673. Which digit represents a whole number? Ooh, I know, I know, 4. Correct. Now it's a tie game. This will be the tiebreaker. In the number 4.673, which digit is in the thousands place? The digit 3 is in the thousands place. That's correct. And with a score of 2 to 1, you are our winner. Thank you both for playing Name That Digit. Good game. It was nice playing with you. You really are fast on that buzzer. Great job. You really know your place values. And for your good sportsmanship, you both have earned free episodes of Mike Drop Mass. You can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or Spotify. You'll always know when the next episode drops if you subscribe. Yes! We love Mike Drop Mass. Thanks for playing. Name that digit. We're mathematicians, but we're readers too. Before we wrap up, Ava and Logan are going to share with you two books that we thought went really well with this maths unit. Hi, I'm Ava. I read the book The Dewey Decimal System by Alan Fowler. I chose this book because I've always wondered what all those numbers on the side of the library books meant. It turns out that Melville Dewey created the Dewey Decimal System as a way of organizing library books. What's interesting is the digits in the numbers represent various ways to classify the books. For example, books in the hundreds are philosophical books, two hundreds are religious books, five hundreds are scientific books, and nine hundreds are historical and geographical books. All of these decimal numbers on the side of the books were really intriguing to me. I decided to play around with these numbers a bit. I took some of the books my classmates checked out and ordered them from greatest to least. If you want to know more about the Dewey Decimal System, I recommend this book. And if you're looking for decimals to order, just look in the library. They're everywhere. Hi, I'm Logan. I read the book, Macmillan Book of Baseball Stories, by Terry Egan, Stan Friedman, and Mike Levine. I love baseball, which is why I chose this book. My favorite story in this book was called, Like Father, Like Son, The Griffies. It was really cool to learn about Ken Griffey Jr. and his dad, Ken Griffey. My favorite quote was when he, his dad said, you just go out there and enjoy yourself. That's the best part of baseball. That's why I play baseball, to have fun. I read about Ken Griffey Jr. and how he stopped having fun when his batting average dropped to 230. I was inspired by him not giving up and how he kept going even when he was struggling. This made me want to look up some other batting averages. His lowest batting average was 184. His highest batting average was 323. Now that I know all about decimals, those batting averages make a lot more sense. If you like baseball, you should check out this book. I can identify the place name and the value for each digit in a decimal number through thousands. I can write decimal numbers through the thousands if I see them written in words or if I hear them read to me. I can identify the place name and the value for each digit in a decimal number through thousands. I can use base 10 models to represent decimal numbers. I can explain the relationships between the places in our place value system. 
I can make connections between rounding whole numbers and rounding decimals. I can justify why a decimal rounds to a specific number using a number line. I can round decimal numbers to the nearest whole number, tenth or hundredth. Well, mic drop mass kids, I've really enjoyed my time here, but I've got to get back between the whole number and the parts. Thanks for letting me make my point here today. I feel a lot better. This podcast was brought to you by the words of Sarah Adams. Everyday love, changing everyday lives.